Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out this night. Oh, it's so great to see all of you here. My name is Edie Barron, and I'm thrilled to be here with the Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra. You're sitting in the beautiful Janesville Performing Arts Center, and I want to thank all of you and the orchestra members for your patience. We had a, a huge glitch with the computer system, and so it took a long time to filter some of you in and get you your seat. So I do apologize for that. Thank you again for your patience. But you're going to hear such beautiful music, it's going to take all those woes away. All right, you're in for a great, great thrill tonight. First of all, I would like to remind you to turn your cell phones off and, you know, just put them away. We're going to be working with your imaginations tonight. You don't need to look at a screen. So take this time to put them away. I want to thank uh, Michael Stahlsberg, our technical director in the back with JPEC, for all the work he's done to help us put this together. And without further ado, yeah, let's give Mike a big hand. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our concert master of the evening, Mr. Joseph Ketchum. And let us welcome to the stage Maestro Rob Tomorrow. Thank you for coming along on our exciting musical journey this evening. Our theme today is painting pictures in sound. How is it possible to paint a picture in sound, you might ask? You can't look at sound the same way you look at a picture. Well, maybe you can if you let your imagination take you on a musical journey like the one we are going to go on right now. How is music like a picture? Well, you might want to think of it like this. How many of you have taken art classes or even just done finger painting? I'm sure most of you in the audience have. That's great. And if you haven't, you should. <laughs> Imagine that you start off with a blank piece of paper, and maybe you take some yellow and make a yellow stripe. Then another one and another one, and you see that they could be petals of a flower if you paint them in a circle, and so you do that. Then you paint a long green line from the petals down to the bottom of the page, and now you have a daisy. Music is like a painting, too. You start with a white blank page, and your colors are all the notes in the musical scale, and you swirl them around and blend them with all the different instruments in the orchestra, and presto! You can close your eyes and hear a symphony of color and sound and see pictures your imagination can dream of. That's the journey we are going to take right now, painting pictures in sound. The first stop we're going to make is at the Carnival of the Animals. It's kind of like a zoo. The composer thought it might be fun to make music that imitated the way all the animals in a zoo would sound when you visited them. Let's see how he accomplished that. The doors are opening in our musical zoo. Let's take a peek and see what's inside. Our first stop is at the lion's den. Now let's see if our composer can make the orchestra roar like a lion.
next stop is at a little barnyard exhibit with a rooster and some chicks and hens running around in a yard. So now the composer gives us the sound of the big rooster watching all the chickens and hens go by. Our next exhibit has a bunch of donkeys running wild all over the place. Here's how they sound as we wave to them as we go by. And now we come to the tortoises, the turtles. What's the main thing you can tell me about how a turtle moves along? I see some young people here. Can you tell me, does a turtle move fast or slow? What? Slow, you're right. The turtle moves slowly. So here is the music that our composer, Camille Cesson, gives us to show how slow they can go. was so slow it almost stopped. Well, it did stop. Now, it might be fun for you to know that Camille Cesson lived in Paris 150 years ago, and the most popular nightclub in town was called the Falais Berger, and they had a wonderful group of dancers who did a fast, exciting dance called the Can Can. So his musical joke he's making for us here, which would have been well known to his audience in Paris at the time he first played the Carnival of the Animals, was that if you speeded up the turtle music and played it fast, it turned into the exact same music that you would hear at the Folle Berger later that evening, the Can Can song. <laughs> Let's hear the whole turtle song.
and on to the elephants. Can I see some elephant trunks out there? If an elephant could talk, it might sound like our bass fiddles. Here come the elephants. exactly how an elephant would sound. Sometimes they hop high, sometimes they hop low. You never can tell which way the kangaroos are gonna go. Our next stop is at the aquarium. See if you can hear the sound of the fish swimming and wiggling and all the water swirling and splashing around them. Also, you might recognize this since it inspired some of the music for the adventures of Harry Potter movies. <laughs>
Isn't that just delightful? Well, it looks as if we got lost and we wound up back at the donkey cage. So the donkey laugh is on us. And what sound do the donkeys make? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, you could do better than that. Yeah. That's right, hee-haw. They only have two words they can say. The first one's high, it's a he, and the second one is low, and that's the haw. Who can make the sound of the donkey? Hee-haw! Camille Seesaw makes the orchestra say hee-haw! And now we find ourselves walking into a beautiful forest. The pianos make the sound of the wind blowing in the trees. And if you listen carefully, somewhere in the distance, a lone cuckoo sings his one little song. The pianos are the trees, and Joe Cania, sitting high up in a tree somewhere, is our cuckoo with his clarinet. Continuing on our journey, we turn another corner, and suddenly we hear birds, birds of every song and feather, because we are at the aviary, the big bird cage. There are all kinds of birds, but the one who sings the sweetest is a bird sitting proudly at the top of the highest tree. Her song is sung now by our wonderful flute player, Barb Pizoris. Barb, would you hold up your little bird flute for us? 
Could you give a little sample of your bird song? Wow, that's pretty. Let's go visit that aviary. Did you paint a lot of birds in your heads? I hope you did. Now, this next one is very odd because when we go a little further on, we come to the strangest exhibit in our musical zoo. It's not animals at all. It's two very busy and serious creatures who are working hard to get their song to sound good. They are our pianist. Maybe the zookeeper locked them up to make sure they practice and don't run away. And for those of you who play piano and are taking piano lessons, I think you're going to recognize some of what you're going to hear. Let's hear it once again for our wonderful pianist, Ingrid Hansen Pop and Eric Carlson. Boy, do they have a lot of notes to play. Ingrid and Eric, do your thing. I got tired just listening to that. When we come to our next exhibit, we find quite a surprise. The animals here are no longer alive. They are stiff and frozen in time and are called fossils. At least they're not dangerous. They're all pretty docile. They lived and thrived and moved around millions of years ago. To give us some idea of what they might have sounded like, we rely on our wonderful xylophone player, Cindy Blanc, to play us some fossil sounds. Cindy, would you please sound like a fossil for us? Well, that was surely the most fossily fossil sound I ever heard. 
funny tones on fossil bones. Here are the fossils, every one. <laughs> Of all the creatures who can swim and run and fly, the lovely snow white swan might be the most graceful one as she glides by. Our swan song is sung by our wonderful cello section, led by our principal swan, Philip Delicus. Philip, would you please give us a little bit of Swanee River? That is beautiful and elegant. It just glides along in the pond. Camille, Cezanne, wave your musical magic wand, for here comes the swan. <laughs>
so beautiful, it makes me just want to weep. Well, my friends, that's our trip to the zoo. Did you have fun meeting all the musical animals? What did you think of painting pictures in sound? I bet you could almost see the animals when you close your eyes. At least I hope you could. Now, when nighttime comes, the zookeeper turns out the lights and locks up and all the people go home. But this is the animal's favorite time because now they are all alone. They sing their songs loud and hearty and have an all night get down zooey zooey party. Thank you so much. How about a wonderful round of applause of our, for our narrator, Edie Barron. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna have a bit of a stage change now. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to our stage the director of the UW Rock County Youth Orchestra, Gene Dickinson, who's also been a valued member of our first violin section for many, many years. We're very excited to be performing with uh, the student orchestra tonight for the first time. Um, first, they will come on and they will do two pieces, the Norwegian Dance and the Valdredge March. Following that, the student orchestra will be joined by members of the Bloyd Chainsville Symphony for what we call a side-by-side -side concert, which is an opportunity for the young musicians to perform along with the professional players of the Beloit Chainsville Symphony. The combined orchestras will perform two pieces, Tchaikovsky's Overture to Romeo and Juliet and Bizet's Overture to his opera Carmen. We had a wonderful time uh, rehearsing these yesterday and we're sure you're in for a treat to see what uh, your students and your children are going to do for us right now. And so following the Romeo and Juliet and the Overture to Carmen, we're going to take a short intermission and then the symphony will come back with excerpts from the fabulous The Planets by Gustav Holst. Ladies and gentlemen, the UW Rock County Student Orchestra under the direction of 
Jean Dickinson. Thank you so much.
We began this evening talking about the idea of our main theme, which is painting pictures in sound. The Carnival of the Animals. We have a composer from 1886 painting pictures in sound of a menagerie. And now we turn to one of the most beloved works. We're going to do five excerpts from Gustav Holt's 1918, The Planets, The Planets, in which his imagination left the earth entirely. And he started becoming interested in the idea of astrology, which assigns characteristics and uh, different aspects to the different astrological parts of the planets. The first one we're going to do is Mars, the bringer of war. Now, this was written in 1918 as World War I was ending. And if it sounds familiar to you, it's because the great uh, film composer, John Williams, was inspired by this piece and uh, put it into Star Wars, the first Star Wars, the march of the stormtroopers. So, Mars, the bringer of war.
Thank you so much. Next we go to a much calmer, calmer planet with a much more calm energy. The planet Venus, the bringer of love, where everything is lovely and wonderful. Venus.
Thank you so much. Why don't we travel to a planet in which everything moves very, very quickly? Mercury, named after the Greek god Mercury, is pictured with wings on his sandals, the messenger of God. Also, for those of you who are into astrology, Mercury is the ruling planet of the, of the astrological sign Gemini, which is the twins, the two twins. And uh, this has a very interesting aspect to it. Holst wrote it in two different keys being played at the same time. So maybe that's about the twins. Mercury, the winged messenger. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. The next planet we're going to visit is Uranus, which is known as the magician, which is meant in the medieval sense of a sorcerer. And uh, the picture for this is kind of like that character from Harry Potter, professional Dumbledore, long beard, long robe, pointy hat, magic wand. So picture a magician making up magic spells. And at the end of it, according to the legend, you hear a big bang at the end of this movement, and it's him setting everything on fire. So this is Uranus, the magician.
Thank you so much for coming tonight. We're going to send you out with one more planet. This one also inspired John Williams in a number of his great movie scores. I think you'll be able to hear the versions of it. Little bits and pieces from Superman, Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is a happy planet, a fun planet. It's like Disneyland in another world, yeah, the planet Jupiter. So I'd like to thank Edie Barron. I'd like to thank Gene Dickinson and our wonderful UW Rock County Student Orchestra. How about a great round of applause for the kids. And as always, our fabulous Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra, your hometown symphony orchestra. Thank you so much for being with us. The next time we'll be here will be on July 3rd at 6.30, uh, right down the street at Courthouse Park. We do a free uh, Independence Day concert, but on July 3rd, honoring our nation's military. 6.30 in the evening. Look after that in the papers, and we have a wonderful 1718 season planned for you. So now, off to Jupiter.
Thank you so much for going on this musical journey with us. The Beloit Janesville Symphony Orchestra, your hometown orchestra. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.